Number one asks us to match each equation with a description of the function it represents. So if we take a look at each of these descriptions, it says to get the output, add four to the input. So I'm just gonna do this. So we're gonna call our input X and we're gonna add four to that. And it says then multiply the result by two, which means we need to multiply this quantity here Okay, after we add them together, we need to multiply by two. So we can look at this list and whether I put times two at the end of this or I put it in the front of it, that's the same. So we wanna look for X plus four in parentheses times by two and that's letter B. So this one matches number one. Number two, to get the output, add two to the input. So we're gonna take the input plus two, and then multiply the result. So multiply this whole thing times four. So again, we'll look for parentheses, X plus two, and then multiplying by four, that's letter D. Number three, to get the output, multiply the input by two. So we're gonna take and multiply two times the input then we're going to add four to the result. So we're going to take this quantity and we're going to add four to it. And we see that here as option A. And then number four, to get the output, multiply the input by four. So multiply your input by four and then add two to that. So 4x plus two and we see that as C. Number two, function P represents the perimeter in inches of a square with side lengths X. Complete the table. So here we have a square, right? And on a square, all the sides are exactly the same. And remember, perimeter means add all the sides. So if we have four sides and they're all zero, then the perimeter would be zero. If all four of our sides are ones, we would do one plus one plus one plus one. That would give us four. If they were twos, it would be two plus two plus two plus two, which is eight. For three, it would be three, four threes, so that's gonna be 12. If they were all fours, we would have four fours, which is 16. Four fives would be 20, and four sixes would be 24. Then it asks us to write an equation to represent this. Now, an equation is going to not put an actual number for the side length. You're going to think about it as if it was an X and see if you can come up with a pattern. So if we had X on every side, we would add those all together and we would have four X's. So each perimeter is four of the numbers, right? So if the number was X, then we'd have four X's. So our equation would be P of X equals four X. Then it wants us to sketch this graph. So we'll just plot these points. So zero, we're at zero, one, we're at four, side length of two gives us a perimeter of eight, side length of three gives us a perimeter of 12, sides of four gives us 16 for the perimeter, fives on the side gives us 20, and sixes on the sides gives us 24, and then we could connect those. Number three, Functions f and a are defined by these equations. Which function has a greater value when x is 2.5? So this means that we're gonna plug 2.5 into each function. So f of 2.5 means that we're gonna plug 2.5 in for x, and then we will um, evaluate this. So we will do 15 times 
2.5. So we have that minus 37.5 here. So F of 2.5 is equal to 80 minus 37.5, which gives us 42.5. So then we'll plug 2.5 into the A function. So A of 2.5 is equal to 25 plus 10 times 2.5. So then we'll do 10 times 2.5, which is 25. And then 25 plus 25 gives us 50. And it asked us which one is greater and A of 2.5 is 50, which is larger than 42.5. So A of 2.5 is greater than F of 2.5. So A was our answer. Number four, an equilateral triangle has three sides of equal length. So an equilateral triangle looks like this. And the function P gives the perimeter, which again is just adding the sides together of the equilateral triangle of side length S. Find P of 2. So this means that each of these sides would be 2. So the perimeter, so P of 2 would be 2 plus 2 plus 2, which would give us 6. If the sides were all 10, so instead of 2, we had 10 on each side then the perimeter would be 10 plus 10 plus 10, which would give us 30. And if our sides were just called S, then our perimeter would be S plus S plus S, which is three S's. So the perimeter would be three S. Number five, imagine a situation where a person is using a garden hose to fill a child's pool. Think of two quantities that are related in this situation. So if we're filling a pool with a hose, right? Um, so we've got, you know, some type of child's pool. And then we are um, using a hose to fill it, right? So our hose is going to have water. And so we're going to be filling this pool, okay, from the hose. So define a function using a statement. So what are two quantities that could be happening here? Well, we're going to be turning the hose on and then it's going to be filling up this pool, right? So then this is just going to be figuring out there's going to be some amount of water. So there's going to be an amount of water H2O for water. And that's going to be changing based on how long our hose is on. So our time could be our other quantity. So the amount of water in the pool and how much time the hose is on. And so this is going to say um, that the amount of water, so I'm just going to fill it in this blank, okay? So the amount of water, and they want us to use quantities. Um, or thinking about the quantities here, the units of measurement. So water is generally measured in gallons, okay? So the amount of water in gallons is a function of time. And so when you're filling this, what would we maybe be wanting to measure? Probably not seconds because it's going to take a while to fill the pool. So you don't want to be sitting there talking about thousands of seconds. Um, it's also not going to take forever. So you probably don't want to do hours. So a good time measurement for this is probably minutes. Then it says sketch a possible graph of this function and label your axes. Um, you kind of get to make up some quantities here. You could go and search how fast does a hose fill um, but I'm just going to make something up. I'm going to say every minute. So for every one minute the hose is on, it's going to give you 10 gallons. And again, you could 
this is just made up because it doesn't actually tell us anything in here. Um, so let me actually change this output to orange so that I can label these axes. Um, so your horizontal one is your time and then your vertical one is your gallons. And then you can just label some measurements here. So if you want to just do 10 by 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Then you can label this one in minutes. So if you just wanted to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever. Um, and now you're just going to sketch this. So if we're going for one minute, that's going to fill 10 gallons. Two minutes would fill 20 gallons. Three minutes at 30. Four minutes at 40. Five minutes at 50. And you could just connect those. Then it wants us to just pick a point on this graph and explain what it means. So you can pick any of these. I'm just going to pick this one is the point 330. So this means there are 30 gallons of water in the pool after three minutes. And again, this part I made up. So you get to kind of make up a, some stuff for this um, situation, how fast your hose is actually um, filling your pool, and then just sketch a graph to go with it. Number six, function C gives the cost. So remember when the function gives something, this is your output. So gives the cost in dollars of buying N apples. So then this N apples is your input. And remember when we write functions, whoops, impute. So input. Um, so when you're writing your function, your input goes inside, which makes sense. So the input is going to be in here. And then your output is going to be what it equals. So then we want to pick the statement that represents the meaning of C of 10 equals 9. So we know, um, we know that the input here is 10. So we're buying 10 apples. So this is going to be 10 apples. And then it gives us an output here of 9. So that's going to be 10 apples equals $9 is what we're looking for. So in A, it says that it's the cost of buying nine apples. Well, that's wrong. The cost of nine apples, again, no, we have 10 apples. And then C just says, it says the cost of 10 apples. No, that would have been like this. It would have just stayed here without an equal sign. D gives us 10 apples is $9. That's what this one actually says since it gives us that output. Number seven, Diego is baking cookies for a fundraiser. He opens a five pound bag of flour and uses one and a half pounds to make, or one and a half pounds of flour to bake the cookies. Which equation or inequality represents F, the amount of flour left in the bag after Diego bakes the cookies? So we've got this bag of flour, right? And it is full when he opens it. And so in this bag, we have five pounds of flour. Then he goes to bake cookies and he uses up a pound and a half, right? So he uses up a pound and a half of the flour and we want to know how much is left. So using up means that he's subtracting 1.5 pounds and that's going to give him what's left over here is 3.5 pounds. So that is equal to F. So F is equal to three and a half pounds is what he has left in the bag.